You know, research has said that one in every three persons is extremely beautiful, exceptionally beautiful. I want you to look to the right and look to the left and see if it's that person. Come on, come on, come on. Look to your right and look to your left. Well, if it is neither of those persons, it must be you. <laughs> You're extremely beautiful. And by the way, some of you do not know that CPC is an extremely beautiful place. The recently crowned Miss World. You heard me right, Miss World. Her mother is a member of this church. I want to get some of those genes from her. Her mother and aunt are members of this church. Miss World, most beautiful woman in the world right now. You are all beautiful. We are all beautiful. Let me begin this morning with a couple of the prevailing theories as to where we came from. There's a theory out there called monogenesis. Monogenesis. Monogenesis is the origination of a race or species from the same stock. Notice that word, the same stock. And that's why the Bible says in Acts 17 and verse 26, He has made of all nations what? One blood. One blood of all nations to dwell upon the earth. I discovered in my research that there are three races really in the world. Caucasoid, Negroid, and Mongoloid. Caucasoid, of course, white. Negroid, black. Mongoloid, Asians. But they are all from one stock. So monogenesis says we all are from the one stock. But there's another theory out there called polygenesis. Polygenesis is the hyp hypothetical origination of a race or species from a number of independent stocks. Notice, a number of independent stocks. And that is why some believe that black people, for instance, and Mongoloid people are from a different stock and not from Adam as God created. So look at what slide number one says. So Noah awoke from his wine. Whoa. His wine. <laughs> his wine. <laughs> After being encaged for a year with those stinking animals, he needed something to forget what he had gone through. He awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be his, uh, to his brethren. A servant he shall be to his brethren. And that is why where they get this polygenesis from. That because Ham was cursed for looking at his father in his nakedness, that a generation has arisen out of Ham they are servants and slaves. Hence, they are not MVPs in the human race. They are LVPs, least valuable people. That is where polygenesis came from. Polygenesis is a diabolical conspiracy with tentacles that have penetrated the human psyche and wrapped themselves around the whole world. Because wherever you go, People are tense about the color of your skin. Where did we come from? Where did we come from? I told this story two years ago um, in the context of education. Who was educating your children? But today I'm going to tell you the story in the context of where did we come from. A 10-year-old boy came home from school one day. Mommy, I have a question to ask you. Mommy picked him up. They drove home. I have a question to ask you. And he said that about, I mean, 10, 15 times. Mommy said, what is the question? The young lad said, Mommy, where did I come from? Mommy said, oh, no, I got to tell him about the birds and the bees now. I didn't want to tell him that early. But, you know, as a wise mother, she said, why did you ask, son? He said, well, Mommy, today, Tisha told me that we came from monkeys. And I, I don't want to come from monkey, Mommy. <laughs> Did I really come from monkey? Mommy said, no boy, let me tell you where you came from. 
God fashioned you in my womb. And you were born as a little baby. And you grew up, you learned to, cr- to creep and crawl and to walk. And now you're in school and you're learning. So God made you, you were made in the image of God. Well, you know, father drove home a little bit later on. And the boy went over and he said, Daddy, I have a question to ask you. What's the question, son? Daddy, I have a question. What's the question, son? Well, Daddy, where did, we come from? did I come from? Daddy said, okay, boy, I'll tell you where it came from. Once upon a time, you were a little amoeba. What is an amoeba, Daddy? A, 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 a little thing with just one cell. And afterwards, you became a tadpole. And you were swimming around, swimming around in the, in the lake. And then you became a frog and you jumped out of the, the lake. And afterwards, you became a rabbit and you were jumping a little bit higher. And then you, were, you became a kangaroo and you were jumping still a little higher. And then you became a monkey and you were swinging back and forth from the tree. And the boy said, oh, daddy, I don't want to be a monkey. So he went over to his mom and he said, mom, really, where did I come from? Daddy told me that I came from monkey. Mom said, boy, sit down. I'll tell you the truth. I was telling about my side of the family and he was telling about his side. Yeah, boy didn't want to come from monkey. Noah is the second father of the generation of mankind. Let's go to the next slide. And we do a little reverse engineering here. And I've shortened the text for you to just give you the, a taste of what it says. Um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, sons of Noah, son of Lamech, son of Methuselah, son of Enoch, son of Jared. Keep going. All right. Now, son of Methuselah, son of Kenan, son of Enosh, son of Seth, son of who? Adam. That is the genealogy. That is the pedigree of you and me. The second generation started after the flood. But it is all traced back, monogenesis, all the way back to Adam. We all came from Adam. And so there is no polygenesis. We did not come from a different source. Not because Ham was cursed to be a servant and a slave to his brothers. We all are traced all the way back to Adam, our father. And of course, from Adam to God. Everything that we are was in the DNA of Adam and Eve. God planted deep down in them the stem cells that would grow into different organs and would grow into different colors of people and would go with people with different shaped eyes and different shaped nose and different shaped lips. God planted it all in Adam and Eve. The Mongoloids and the Negroids were not a creation after man was originally created. We were all created by God. Placed right there in Adam and Eve. Many years ago when Lego started coming. My girls were young and we went out and we bought a box of Legos. And it was so much fun to just sit down and, and build all kinds of stuff out of the Legos. Planes and trains and buses, you know, and, and pools and bridges and so on and so forth. And it dawned on me as I was preparing this sermon that, you know what? Adam was like a complex Lego. And out of Adam, we have built Negroid and Mongoloid and Caucasoid, and we all have come out of Adam. But God planted those dominant genes in Adam and recessive genes also so that they would develop and manifest themselves in who you and I are today. We are all brothers and sisters no matter how we look. CPC is a reflection of heaven, a rainbow coalition of people, of all races and all faces because we all belong to the one God. Monogenesis, back, it goes back to Noah. So Noah begot Shem and Ham and Japheth and begot all of us, one grandfather, one blood, one nation, different tongues, different faces, in different places. We all are from the one source. But all from Adam and from God. The one DNA that has made you and me one nation. One blood under God. And I say, yes, sir, that is the absolute truth. Because the Bible says so. We are one blood under God. 
In your body, your hand does not look like your foot. Your foot does not look like your eye. Your eye does not look like your ears. But guess what? They came out of the one body. They are all a part of the one body. So where the, the polygenesis theorists um, find it that we look differently and we should look differently because we are from different stock is absolutely unbiblical. You and I are from the one stock, from God our Father who made Adam and Eve in the beginning. For example, monogenesis, the first automobile by Carl Benz was made in 1885. The first airplane by the Wright brothers in 1903, the Kitty Hawk. Polygenesis would say different parts of a plane a car are made of different materials by different individuals in different parts of the world. And that is true. But monogenesis says we are all traced back to God our Father. So when you and I walk around, we must not walk around with our shoulders bent over and with our faces looking to the ground as if anyone is better than us or anyone is less than us. Nobody is better than you. Nobody is less than you because we all belong to the one Father. As someone said, God, God don't create no junk. Pardon the grammar. God don't create no junk. It's the undeniable truth that God loves us no less than he loves people who think they are better than us. You heard me right. God loves us no less than he loves people who think they are better than us. Humans are made of one blood, one flesh, by one hand, the hand of God. Hence the Caucasoid, the white. The beauty is no better than the Mongoloid, the Asian. Their beauty is no better than the Negroid, the black. Beauty in God's eyes is just plain beauty. So celebrate a little bit of heaven on earth. I like to come to worship at CPC because we all get along together as brothers and sisters. We must all live together as brothers or we will perish together as fools, Martin Luther King Jr. Polygenesis, ethnic and cultural relativism and oppression uh, led to the slaughter and the genocide and the Holocaust and Bosnia and Rwanda. It is all because of this theory of polygenesis. Some people are less than the others. And so those who believe that they are more should persecute and kill those that are less than them. And it is still holding our children in cages like they are animals today. That is polygenesis at work. Your children and my children, made from the one stock that we are made from, are being held in cages. Because there are some people who believe that certain classes of people are less than others. I don't know about you, but my righteous indignation gets going on my blood boils when I think about it. Let's go to the next slide. Black beauty. Black beauty. I am dark. Thank you, Ella Carson. The King James says black. And you know why I know it is black? Follow. But lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar. You know the tents of Kedar are made of black goat hair. So that word that says dark should really say play black. The tents of Kedar are made of black goats here. Like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look upon me because I am black. Because the sun has tanned me. Keep going. All right. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. But my own vineyard I have not kept. I'm kind of angry at those boys. Ladies, have you ever wondered why are they sending the girl, girl out to work in the hot sun? Where were they? So much so she had to comment on it. The Shunammite girl said, I am black because I am working out in the sun. Why the boys, where were they? In the cool shade. My own vineyard, her own body, she could not keep because she was out in the vineyard busily working. And I want to remind you this morning, I have heard some... Theologians say, 
when the Lord comes and we eat the leaves of the tree, it will heal us. It will heal us back to one color. I beg to differ. I looked at a number of theologians on Rev Revelation 22 and verse 2. The leaves of the tree are not for the healing of our color. It is for the healing of our inferiority and superiority complex that we have. Because some people just got to believe that they are superior than others. That's what is going. Tribalism is still very much alive in our world today. Was a Shunammite girl put out to slave labor in the vineyard because she was dark-skinned? Or was it dark-skinned because she was put out to slave it out in the hot sun? I wrote a little poem called Black Beauty. And I want to share it with you this morning. I am black and beautiful, gifted and wonderful. God made me so. I want you to know. Made by his own hands, he alone understands the range of my potential. He is my soulmate, my pal. Look at me. Can't you see? I am one of a kind with a gifted mind. My possibilities are limitless. I am no less than any other, whether a sister or a brother. I'll always be my best. Face every test with confidence and with, with no pretense. I am designed to be great. That is my delightful faith. So I will let nothing or no one, not even the mighty dragon, get in my way night or day. I will work my hardest. I will keep abreast of every challenge, every opportunity that arise in my personal community. I will be respectful and purposeful and cheerful and dutiful. I'll be persistent and courageous. I will be eternally ambitious. I will be a positive role model. I will vigorously repel the urge to be lazy, to be negative, for I have much to give. I am special. I am unique. Look at my gorgeous physique. But don't judge me by that of by that or the color of my skin. Judge me from what I have within. I am black and beautiful. That is who I am. Created for greatness by the great I am. So I am me and I'm proud. A unique specimen among the vast crowd. God made and God empowered. My reach will never be lowered. For I am born a born winner. That's the undeniable message of my inner. Black and beautiful. Ambitious and resourceful. On this earthly side. Only God. Black and beautiful. Black and beautiful. Is God colorblind? I hear people say God is colorblind. That's a lie people tell on God. God is not colorblind. Is God prejudiced? Yes, he is. And I will tell you why I say God is not colorblind and he's prejudiced. What color is God's skin? Is it black, brown, yellow, red, or white? Every man is the same in the good Lord's sight. Prejudice. Is God colorblind? Prejudice. Is God prejudice? Sure he is. Colors. Is God colorblind? Sure he's not. Forest and woodlands, trees tall and short, spreading branches, arching limbs, shrubs and oaks, palms and pines, maples and cherries and fall colors. The hues of gold and yellow, brown and red and purple. Dissimilarity, difference, contrast, discordance. God loves variety. He designed it to be so. Check out the colors of the rainbow. Birds and fish and animals, what variety? By design and not by default. Classification, genus, species, phylum, unique, different. Multiplicity, divergence in behaviors, functions, usefulness. What a God, creator of intermixture and assortment. God is not colorblind. If God were colorblind, why would he create yellow flowers and red flowers and white flowers and blue and pink flowers? Why would God do that? Is God prejudiced? Yes, he's prejudiced against sameness. God is prejudiced against sameness. That is why he has made such a variety in this world for you and I to understand. So don't excuse God by saying he's colorblind all because it makes us feel good. Well, he just sees us all and what? No, 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 no. God sees us as we are. With our color, we are precious in God's sight. Let me tell you a second story. Wounded but strong, I call it. Nelson Mandela is our modern Joseph. He spent 27 years in a South African jail because of 
what I call rhetorical sleight of hand. Pathological mendacity. I mean lying. That's a fancy word to say, lying. All oh, the lies we hear today. 18 of those years on Roden Island, a rock quarry off the coast of Cape Town. He was arrested for treason, but acquitted, then arrested again for illegally leaving the country. He was tried in 1964 for sabotage and jailed again. The system was rigged against him. Listen to me. If they won't let you speak, they won't let you live. You'll get it on your way home. If they won't let you speak, they won't let you live. Listen to this one. If you testify, we will crucify. If you testify, we will move you up high. That's the society we live in today. If you testify of the truth, they will crucify you. Mandela testified of the truth. He was not satisfied that the black people in South Africa were being treated that way. While in prison, he continued to fight for a democratic and free society in South Africa. He was released from jail on February 11, 1990. He won the Nobel Peace Prize, Presidential Medal of Freedom, complete forgiveness of those who jailed him. You heard me right. Complete forgiveness of those who jailed him, like Joseph. And today we are hearing people saying that they don't believe in forgiveness. I hope to see Mandela in heaven. I plan to see him in heaven. Mandela was wrong, but he was still strong because of mental emancipation. An attitude that won the day. Mandela, not the basest of men for sure. With all that happened, the day Nelson Mandela walked in his office, all of the people who worked in the presidential office were white. They packed their boxes and they were on their way out and Mandela said, not so fast. You all are going to stay and work with me and for me. Could you and I find it in our hearts to be that forgiving of someone who robbed you of 27 years of your life? In researching for this sermon, I ran into some statistics from the government website. Black history, they call it, and mass incarceration. Mass incarceration in the United States is one of the main forms of punishment for the commission of felony and other offenses. The U.S. has the largest prison population in the world. Did you know that? We don't have the largest population in the world. But we have the largest prison population in the world and the highest per capita incarceration. Follow me. Since 1970, the incarcerated population has increased by 700%. And I'll tell you who is in those jails. Hold on. The increase in jail and prison population from less than 200,000 in 1972 to 2.2 million today has led to the un Unprecedented prison overcrowding. Follow me. There are collateral consequences that accrue to imprisoned people even after their sentences are completed. Watch this. Don't miss this. Here are some stats. 13% of the drug users and sellers are African Americans. 13% in this country of the drug users are African Americans. 17% are various Latino groups 65% are white. Yet, more than 50% of those imprisoned for drug sales or possession are blacks. Thank you, brother. Mercy, Jesus. This is not a figment of my meditation. 
imagination. Go to the government website and you will find the same st statistic. Only 13% of the drug users are blacks. Yet 50% of those who are in jail. So you see why the jail population in America has increased to where it is today. Because people that look like me are overpopulating the jail in America, the jails in America. Unquestionably, undeniably, just us, just us, instead of justice. Our society has succeeded in weaponizing the color of one's skin, the shape of the nose, the accent of our speech, weaponizing our economic status, weaponizing our academic achievement, weaponizing our country of origin, weaponizing our religion and sexual orientation, all weapons of mass incarceration, mass intimidation, mass exclusion, mass suppression, and mass destruction. Yeah. I'm a little angry today. I am. Because we thought slavery was over. But here I come, slavery. But I want to remind you today that all men, all power mongers, all powerholics will have their date with a thing called time. All evil leaders and oppressors of God's children have a date with T-I-M-E. Not Hitler, not Stalin, not Napoleon, not Nebuchadnezzar, not Idi Amin, not Hugo Chavez, not Fidel Castro, not Andrew Jackson, not McCarthy, not Nixon, not any other U.S. president that has lived or is living or will ever live will ever defeat time. Blacks are suffering today from what we call generational PTSD. But it's more than high time for generational emancipation. We got to be emancipated. We got to come to the place where we say we have dealt with the past and we have forgiven like Mandela has done. But Jim Crow is not dead. Of the 12 countries that are prohibited from entering this country right now, Every last one of them is a country with people of color. Wake up, folk. Every last one of those countries are countries with people of color. The polygenesis theorists and believers believe that people of color do not deserve to be in this country. A univocal universal cacophony of the cry for justice for all peoples, Caucasoid and Negroid and Mongoloid is being heard today. But where are the men and women who will stand for the right though the heavens fall? Where are the men and women who will see sin and call it by its right name? Where are the men and women whose consciences are true to duty as the needle is to the pole? Where are the men and women in our Senate, in our government, who will stand for the right though the heavens fall? I'm going to call some witnesses this morning. I'm going to call some witnesses that just us instead of justice is still going on. Let me fact check it. I'm going to call some witnesses. Maybe you don't want me to call witnesses. But I, I can't come to a fair conclusion without calling some witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Let me first of all call on some political social justice activists. Let me call an Amos. Go to the next slide, please. Let me call an Amos. Let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. That is Amos, our first witness. He's saying that there is no justice. Let it run down like water. Let's go to our next witness. We call Isaiah. The way of peace they have not known. And there is no what? Justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Crooked paths. Crooked paths. I say crooked paths. Did I say crooked paths? They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. Let's call the third witness, Habakkuk. Therefore, the law is 
powerless and justice never comes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. Let's call our next, next witness to the stand. We call on Micah. Look at what Micah says. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to, to do what? Justice. To love what? Kindness. And to do what? To walk humbly with your God. I want to tell you, the days of Nebuchadnezzar are here again. The days of Belshazzar are here again. There is no justice in the land. And I want to tell you that Nebuchadnezzar did not beat time. Neither, neither did Belshazzar. And neither will any man in the Senate or in the government who stands up against justice. They will not defeat time. How about the Jesus Manifesto? When Jesus came, as my final witness, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He begins with the poor at the top of his list. I am going to bring good news to the poor. Our nation has essentially disconnected itself from justice and righteousness and morality. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. It is widespread. The United States has essentially abandoned civil, civility and decency. Listen to this from Ellen White. Testimonies uh, 5, page 451. The day is coming when the United States will repudiate its constitution. Did you hear me, Brother Germain? It is here. When the United States will repudiate its constitution. You and I saw that happen just this week. Check me out. Testimonies, volume 5, page 451. But with all of this said, it is time to change our generational attitude and which will give us a powerful antidote for perceived injustice. We cannot change our past, but we can change our attitude today. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. The only thing we can do is call on the supreme justice. Turn around to God and call on the supreme justice because God's God never goes to sleep. He will come through for his children. He will come through. I am convinced, says Chuck Swindle, that life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. We can change our attitude. The only environment we can control is the one inside of us. So let me go to the last part of my message today. Emancipation proclamation. Free at last. 1863. Abraham Lincoln declared an end to slavery. And by the way, slavery had ended in Jamaica long before 1863. Then Maroons were bad guys. And when their slave masters thought that they were going to take them in full control, the Maroons said, not so fast. And they fought them tooth and nail until they had to flee the country. So slavery was abolished in Jamaica. Jamaicans have hot blood, you know. <laughs> oh, it was abolished in Jamaica before it was abolished in the United States of America. You and I today, you and I today can get freedom from self-incarceration. Long after slavery was over, people were still behaving as if they were slaves. So with you and I today, we are lying to ourselves that we are still incarcerated let's experience the emancipation marcus garvey and bob marley said emancipate yourself from mental slavery they may not have you in chains but you have yourself in chains emancipate yourself from low self-esteem which often leads to self-incarceration low self-esteem gets into our head and hijacks our confidence and assurance and our promise you are no less than anyone else. Can I get an amen? amen. Low self-esteem is radioactive. It will melt you down to nothing. 
living with low self-esteem low self-esteem because we are different from others or because they treat us differently it's like living on payday loans i've never been on payday loans but i know of people who have been on payday loans you know you never get out of debt you have to pay 36 40 percent on the loan that you took and by the time your next payday comes you are still in the hole and someone has said if you are in a hole just stop digging Low self-esteem does that to you. You keep digging and digging and digging and feeling you are not adequate. You are not, I am black and beautiful. I am white and beautiful. I am mongoloid and beautiful. Made in the image of God. Amen. Lovable and capable. Hold up your head and walk and live on glowing confidence. You are a child of Noah, a child of Methuselah, a child of Seth, a child of Adam, a child of the Almighty God. What about retroactive freedom? With our chronic low self-esteem, we end up fighting battles that Jesus Christ has already won for us. Romans 8 verse 1 says, no, there is no condemnation. And John 8 and verse 36 says, if the Son has made you free, you are free indeed. Thank you, Brother Jermaine, for that song, Victory. We have the victory already. It is not promised to you and me. It has been given to you and me. Amen. Praise God Almighty in Christ. We are free. We are free at last. Personal, spiritual, mass self-incarceration is more prevalent uh, than the judicial incarceration today. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Someday soon and very soon, we shall be free at last. Do I have a witness in the house? Free from being judged by the color of our skin and the shape of our eyes or the accent of our speech, the country of origin, but by the con not by the but by the content of his character, because there is none good but God. We will be judged by the content of the character of Jesus Christ. Beauty is not enough, and neither is wealth or fame or fortune. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Free someday from small-minded people who continue to uh, confine us to just like we are supposed to be working in the vineyards. Free from the slavery of things and things and more things. Free from tyrants who block our people from coming to the land made of immigrants and lock up our children in cages. Free from despots who give big tax breaks to the wealthy and are cutting the allowance for people on food stamps. One of these days, time is going to take him down. Because my Bible tells me that in the days of those kings, a stone, did I say a stone? A stone, a stone, a stone. In the Hebrew, it is heben. It is not a pebble. It is not a small rock that you throw. It is a boulder. One of these days, a big boulder shall be cut out of the mountain without hand. It shall shatter the everything in its path, and it will fill the whole earth. And the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God, and he shall reign forever and ever. The time is coming. The first thing that God created when he created this earth was time. In beginning, that's the first creation. No man, no tyrant in this earth has ever beaten time. And the Bible says a time is coming when the kingdoms of our God, but the, the, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom for God then you and I will be free at last free at last to gorge ourselves on the leaves of the tree of life which will finally heal our superiority and inferiority complex free at last free at last praise God Almighty someday we will be free at last